Hey, what's up everyone? My name is Murray. Welcome to this tutorial. We're going to take a look at the intro we saw at the beginning of the video. Uh, I'm going to give you the project file so you can create it and customize it to however you like. Um, of course, if you don't have After Effects or you just don't want to do it, uh, contact me on my About page on my website. I can do it for you guys. There's no hassle there. Um, also, consider subscribing to the channel because I have a low self-esteem and that'll help boost it. Also, if you don't, I'll hack a YouTube account and subscribe anyway. So, yeah, let's take a look. But first, intro. Alright, so here we are in After Effects and uh, when you download this off the site, you can use the coupon free at checkout to get it 100% off. So, you got that. Just a quick note, I'm just going to breeze through this. I'm not going to go through the whole creation because it would just simply be a way too long of a tutorial. The beginners may have to slow down the video or watch a couple times, uh, but you will definitely get it. This isn't a full walkthrough tutorial. I'm just going to break down the scene and show you what I've done, show you the main parts that were complicated so that if you run into the same issues, you know what to do. Uh, we're going to start off by breaking this up a little bit. Uh, right here, I just have the background. So uh, it's just a plain white background. Then I have the title here. I've just duplicated them because just to, to kind of accentuate, accentuate is the word, uh, the shadow, right? So there's a shadow there. I just duplicated to accentuate it because I have an effect here called drop shadow and I was messing around with directional blur. You can do that, but it's, it's not really that big of a deal. That's kind of how I would look with it. Uh, but I have the drop shadow here. You can copy these settings if you would like to. And I've just duplicated it because it does have a see-through or transparent background. So when I duplicated it, it duplicated the shadow and it just made the shadow a bit darker. So you can see the difference there. Then at the end here, I've just kind of split it because it, the animation finishes and it just kind of stays static. So I just duplicated it, right clicked on it, time, time reverse layer and it reversed the layer so that it would kind of go back and do its animation backwards and kind of close. Really you just need to focus on the animation in, it does its thing and it stays on screen and then once you have it in your main project here just duplicate it, split it here and just reverse the time. So we're going to go ahead into the title here and see what we got here. It can be a little daunting at first. Let's just turn the background on just to make it look better for now. Let's start at the beginning here. I have the shape layer. I just used the pen tool and I just created a line or like in a shape and then I have the squares on the same layer so those are there as well and I just animated their position and I used an expression so that when it's rotation and the scale here you can see and the position as well you can see it kind of bounces at the end of the rotation so there's that little bounce there on that line I used an expression I'll include that in the download but I can just show you here I have a whole tutorial on this expression as well and I'll include that in the cards at the top right here. But I just included that expression there. And so anywhere you see that bounce effect, that's when I've used the expression on that property. And then what I have is my shape here, which is the square. Uh, I'll just hide it just so you can see it. And I've just added a trim pass when the line kind of reveals it kind of thing. I just kind of timed the, the trim paths. So if I just show it all here, you can see there's the trim path, the start and the end. And I just kind of had it at zero and then I just kind of went out as the line revealed it. So that's also very nice. Then I had it rotate. That rotation also has that bounce. So I've added that expression as well. And then it kind of scales down as well. And then the next things come up, which is a square here, which is actually this one. It's just the square where it scales up. And I have a square on the inside, which is smaller with a duplicate of it. And I just did alpha inverted mat over here so that it kind of subtracted. So that as soon as once it scales up, it kind of takes out the middle of the square and it just scales past the squares to hide it completely. And then what we have are the decaying squares as well. So I, this is what I called them. It's just these little squares. I animated the position and also animated the rotation. And I did the same as with the square here with the track mat and the, the middle square going bigger than the, the out, outside square. So that's how I got those lines to kind of subtract the middle of the square. And I kind of animated its position so that it went out and they kind of faded out like that. Next thing I have is the square, which is I actually use the polygon tool right up here. And uh, I just created the shape 
and I pick whipped the shape or the amount of sides to this slider here so that I can give it as many sides as I want. So I can turn the whole thing into a circle if I want to. I can turn it into a triangle with three sides. I can turn it into six sides. So that's very nice as well. And it does these little ones as well. So it kind of stays the same. So I'm just going to keep that as a square for now. And it's also got all the controls for the colors and the roundness of the square of the, the main square. So you can turn that into a circle and keep the others a square if you would like. And so then to change the logo, so you would simply click on the logo here. This should actually be green so that you can actually edit it here. You can double click it, change the logo, whatever you want. So you would change it over here. This would also be green right over here. Double click it, add your logo, whatever you want, and then close it. It'll update in here and close that one. It'll update in here and it'll look just as it ha has here with your own logo. And then I just simply have the text here. I just animated the position right over here. It kind of came in with the bounce effect with that easy ease expression that I've included into the download as well. And it just stays up like that for the rest of the composition. And that's when I went into the main comp here, duplicated it, cut it, and then just reverse the time and it kind of went back into its original position here. So that's kind of the full layout. Otherwise, that's pretty much it. If you guys enjoyed, consider subscribing because I'm lonely. <sighs> And uh, yeah, you can contact me on my website on the about page. You can uh, ask me to create it for you if you guys don't have After Effects or you just don't want to. Uh, or maybe you're a beginner and you're not quite sure about After Effects yet. Uh, but yeah, until next time, remember, keep smiling, keep shooting, and don't be lazy. I don't know why I said that. Maybe because I'm lazy. Yeah. Don't get lonely either.